martyr. The origins of the word martyr is, is Greek. I know it has different connotations today, but it's a Greek word. It means witness. So what are we witnessing today? I call it the, the brutal cycle of the human condition. We are angry. We are crying. And maybe there's some moment in the day we were, were able to get away from the news, the social media. We tell ourselves, it's okay to find a couple hours of things that we enjoy. But again, what are we witnessing? Never in our lives would we ever imagine that we would consult with Holocaust survivors to help the Israeli government come up with the best way in order to help the hostages as they come home. Never in our lifetime would we feel that the world is absolutely abandoning us. Never in our Jewish world would we witness that people wouldn't believe the stories of Israeli women, Jewish women. Never will we believe that human rights organizations would seek to destroy the narratives of our people on October 7th. Nowhere in our lifetime would we ever imagine the rise of Jew hatred that we've seen across the world. Whether it's at the Grove in Los Angeles, which is a shopping area of the most grotesque Jew hatred. The Thanksgiving parade yesterday. The total collapse of the university system to protect Jewish students. This is what we all are witnessing. And I truly believed that when we found out what happened, the world would finally understand the plight of our people. It's only been exacerbated. So the question we've been asking is, what do we do? What do we do when we are witnesses to a world that's against us? Never in my lifetime as a rabbi would I think that we would need to cancel Sunday school because of a pro-Hamas rally intended to be on the 2000 block on Highland Avenue. Never in my lifetime would, again, we would have to cancel Jewish education for our youth. So people ask me, Adam, when, when, are you, when are we going to go on the offensive? When am I going to come up here and do one of my sermons? What do we call this, the bully pulpit? We're not there yet. Because we're angry, we are sad, because we are witnessing the total collapse of Western ideals, the Enlightenment. We haven't been able to mourn. And we're going to be dealing with this for a significant period of time. But I have to give you guys something. It's an obligation. 
because I know this is on your minds every single day. And I promise you, there will be that moment when we go on the offensive like you've never seen before. Recruiting myriad of lawyers to help file civil rights lawsuits against universities. We're going to be doing this, but we're not ready yet. And believe me, I am still angry that we had to close our Sunday school, and I'm not going to let this one go. I want to thank all the mayors in Shelby County that wrote an unconditional statement for the Jewish people and repudiated the evil of Hamas with such prejudice. It was such a strong letter. I want to thank those mayors in Shelby County for doing this. Believe me, we will go on the offensive. But before we do that, we have got to change our, our mind view. So tonight, this is what we're not going to do. As I said, the first Shabbat, post October 7th, we're going to stop identifying as Reformed, Conservative, Orthodox Jews. We're just Jews. But the second thing that we're not going to do, we're going to stop saying that we have a complex relationship with our indigenous homeland. You can say you have a complex relationship with a strange neighbor across the street. We're done with that. When we say the Alenu, this is a prayer about the gathering of the exiles, a return to Eretz Israel, where we get to be the masters of our own faith, our destiny, we decide what we're going to do. So we, as a congregation, we're going to stop with this old narrative. I have a difficult issue with Israel. She is an imperfect country before October 7th, just like we are an imperfect country too. And as Maimonides taught us, we are all imperfect beings. We strive to figure out, to work on our imperfections. We don't strive to be perfect. But as we've seen in this country, how fast so many sectors can turn against us, our unity, what we say, our liturgy, we don't identify as Reformed Jews, Conservative Jews in our prayer book. I know it says a Reformed Sidor, but when we say the prayers, is identified by contemporary Jewish movements? It doesn't. So I'm going to ask this congregation, moving forward, we've got to stop holding Israel to an illogical double standard that no other country in the world receives. It's maddening to me. It's always has been maddening to me to me. It's been so problematic that so many rabbis have used Yontif to talk about the, the challenges of the state of Israel. She's 75 years old and has done so remarkably well when we really think about it. The majority of Jews in Israel, they're not Ashkenazi. They're Mizrahi, they come from the Middle East, they're Sephardic. Yes, they're innovation, yes, they're technology, but it's their chesed, it's their compassion. During the war in Syria, Operation Good Neighbor was Israeli doctors who were treating Syrian refugees. And when they had to return back to Syria, it was the genius of Israeli doctors to figure out a way to come up with fraudulent medical papers that they had their procedures done in Iraq, so therefore they wouldn't be persecuted in Syria. It's the IEF who is ensuring that 
premature babies in Gaza are taken care of. It's time we celebrate the most moral army in the world, where JAG officers are embedded to make sure that the rules of engagement are executed to the letter of the law. It's time we stop this narrative of our homeland. When we really think about it, it's all we have. It's all we have. So tonight, we're going to stop this. We're going to love Israel just like we love our own country. We're going to celebrate her as she succeeds. We'll celebrate the imperfections in order that they do better. We do better. We're all witnesses. Now, as diasporic Jews more than ever, it's time to pivot. But we can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. It's not going to be about BB. It's not going to be about various political parties. I'm not interested in that. It's about celebrating the beauty of Israel. Because if you ask those Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust between 1933 and 1945, that there's a former Jewish homeland, but the Jews in the contemporary period are kept on nitpicking this country. That narrative is done. It is over. We are all witnesses. And again, we will go on the offensive in a civil way. Before we do that, we are obligated, we are commanded to change the narrative. And for those who disagree with me, just look at our prayer book. So many prayers talk about our celebration for Israel. It's time we take to heed these teachings. Shabbat Shalom.